Dear audiences, on behalf of Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you for the 22nd episode of Optometry series. The topic for today is an optometric practice for low vision patients. How are we going to check the low vision patients? Today, we have a very eminent moderator, Ms. Devi Uday Kumar, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining with us today, ma'am. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm very happy to welcome my part, my team members, Ms. Meenakshi and Ms. Anshika, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining, Meenakshi. Anshi, ma'am. Thank you so much for bringing in Devi, ma'am, today. So why today's topic and why Devi, ma'am? Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Gomati. Uh, to begin with, uh, about Devi, I have known her from my ESO days. And uh, currently, she was uh, involved with working at VHS and Vision Aid. So she's been involved in a lot of uh, low vision workups. And definitely, when we have a topic like this, where how do you assess low vision cases and how do you take care of low vision patients? I think nobody better than Devi could have been able to explain or give us her expertise because she is into it right now. So not uh, taking more time, we'll move on to uh, who is Devi and uh, what is she exactly doing? So by our uh, speaker MC for today. So thank you so much for accepting uh, Devi and giving your time today. We'll move on to the MC. Okay. So I request our MC, Ms. Sonia Lakshmi, to tell us a few words about our moderator today. Okay. Good evening to one and all. Welcome to the 22nd episode of Optometry Series. The topic for today is an optometric workup for low vision patient. Myself, Sona Lakshmi, studying third year, BSC Optometry, Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry. The moderator for today is Ms. Devi Uday Kumar, is currently head of low vision rehabilitation services of Vision Aid and works for the mission of enabling, educating, and empowering the visual empire. She is a low vision care specialist. She was recently working at Voluntary Health Services, Vision Eye Research Center, Chennai. She has experience of 8 plus years in tertiary eye care hospitals, dedicated 4 plus years to building tertiary low vision care in multi-speciality hospitals. She played a key role in setting up a standardized low vision care center based on WHO stands in addressing vision rehabilitation for the visual impaired. Ma'am has three years of teaching experience to UG and PG optometry students. She teaches low vision care to undergraduate students and to postgraduate students in the Shankar Nitralia Academy. She completed her bachelor's in optometry in 2008 for, from Elite School of Optometry, Chennai. She also completed her PGTM in quality management in healthcare in 2018 from Symbiosis Center for Healthcare, Pune. She also completed the certificate course in medical genetics and the genetic counseling for optometrists under Dr. Kumara Monikwell, February 2021. Dr. Ma'am has an interest in research and the innovative ideas in the field of vision rehabilitation and is widely regarded for her subject matter expertise in the field and, and has presented and participated in national and international conferences. Thank you so much for joining us today, ma'am. Thank you for the extensive uh, uh, words and uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. But let's move on to the presentation, please. And the presenter for today is Ms. Anjana, who has completed her bachelor's optometry from Asalama College of Optometry, Kerala. And she is currently pursuing her fellowship in clinical optometry at Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, Chennai. Ms. Anjana, please start your presentation. Thank you, Swarni Lakshmi. Okay. Today's topic is assessment of visual uh, low vision patient. WHO. Um, uh, WHO definition. A person with low vision is one who has impairment of visual functioning in the better eye even after treatment and or uh, standard refractive correction and has a visual acuity of less than 6 by 18 to light perception or a visual field of less than 10 degrees from the point of fixation but who uses, who uses uh, or in the potential able to use uh, visual, for, uh, vision for the planning and or execution of uh, of task. 
Indian definition. A person with uh, low vision is person having an impairment of uh, impairment of visual function in the better eye even after treatment or standard refractive correction, but who uses or is potentially capable of using vision of uh, vision for the planning uh, or execution of tasks with appropriate assistive device as per the Indian uh, government. But these are the indications of uh, children, uh, young young adults, and old age low vision. Uh, uh, how affect uh, this albinism, uh, ROP, and congenital malformation, optic neuropathy in young adults affect the disease are uh, keratoconus, ocular injuries, light ma light manifestation of congenital man uh, malformation, and old age it affect in disease uh, are. Glaucoma, age related macular degeneration, diabetic maculopathy, and macular degeneration, retinal degeneration, uh, chorioretinitis, and optic atrophy and myopic degeneration. Next, we have to evaluate the uh, low vision patient. First, uh, observe the uh, low vision patient. Observe how the patient utilizes vision for moving or locate an object or for more communication from the time of entry into the clinic history. Uh, understand the difficulties the patient has utilizing vision for uh, visual tasks and identify the tasks that are important for the, uh, for the person to execute. Assessment of visual function, uh, functional vision. Visual acuity and refraction. Then next step is color vision and field of uh, analysis, glare test and contrast sensitivity test and look for dominant eye. Then trial low vision device and instruction, description and uh, after the final follow. Then what to look for a low vision, uh, low vision patient? How to observe the patient? First, we have to observe mobility. Mobility, uh, watch how the patient moves navigate the environment, do they case, care or get uh, in gate, dogs, um, anything, are they questions and confidence in their movements? Then how to observe interaction with surroundings, how to uh, observe the object and pupils and um, pupils and patient, uh, anything. then reading and writing. How to uh, write and how to read approach the written material. Do they hold it close or at a distance? Are they using any special phones and large print electronic device and aid readings? Then, then observe social interaction. How to interact with the social uh, social observe? How they communicate with interact with others and they any particular communication strategies any use such as listening uh, closely and relaying or verbal discussions and body language the eye uh, patient patient uh, eye movement and patient uh, facial expressions all that then navigational behavior and mannerisms of posture and the patient uh, excusing of eyes uh, something else and uh, physical appearance and and how to observe uh, for children's uh, obesity. We have to observe obesity. Then next step is history taking. First, we have to study patient age, ask the patient age and the patient occupation and living situation and chief complaint, ocular history, general history and family history, allergic history and social history, previous uh, low vision care, daily challenges and need the patient uh, need of the patients how to um, history the personal information the basic details such as name and age occupation and contact informations then chief complaint uh, the uh, primary reason the patient seeking help and put difficulty uh, difficulty to reading recognizing face and blurring blurring vision etc then medical history uh, how to uh, how to uh, we have to ask the patient medical history any existing medical conditions any uh, diabetic hypertension and previous uh, surgery treat or surgery treatment and family uh, family history or something else mm, then uh, low vision symptoms details about how uh, how low vision uh, affecting the patient and daily life 
this could be include the affecting with the activities like reading watching tv recognizing people or navigating then ask the patient visual acuity any previous visual acuity measurement and eye exams then visual aids information of which uh, information of any uh, visual aids and users such as magnifiers and glasses or anything next one is functional assessment Funct uh, visual ability logmar chart are the preferred it is preferred it is progression allows uh, flexibility for variable testing distance <laughs> The goal is record. Uh, the goal is uh, record the maximum possible visual acuity at distance comfortable uh, to the patient. Eccentric viewing, head turning, and searching is allowed. For near vision, uh, for near vision, we have to use the uh, chart. The chart is Jigal eye chart, and low vision near acuity cards are recommended. Um, Logmar, uh, Logmar chart also we have we recommend to. Uh, near vision. Use variable uh, variable lightning to assess optimum lightning for best visual acuity. Then next uh, next one is test for closer working distance and better eye first first. Then draw side next. And then after that binocular lens test. Then uh, after that uh, objective refraction. Objective refraction, uh, first we have to auto refraction. Auto refraction, we will uh, uh, do rad uh, radical retinoscopy. Rad uh, radical retinoscopy is shorter working distance when necessary and of axis of axis retinoscopy. Keratometry and corneal topography to measure anterior corneal curvature and corneal integrity. Halbert, uh, then we will use Halbert uh, tri clips to be used. Janelli and Bernal and Bomarito. These, these are the Halbert trial, uh, trial clips. Then next one is subjective refraction. Subjective refraction, we have to trial the um, trial frame with indicated Halbert clip. Then next one is uh, use full apertures, aperture lenses. Then cal calculate JNT. Analyze the collect rating. Determine the smallest change that re reliably uh, re uh, yields noticeable difference. J uh, how to calculate uh, JND? JND is equal to de denominator of visual equity by 30. Uh, example is uh, uh, 60 by 30 is equal to 2 diopter. Then subjective acceptance. In uh, use three meter or one meter chart, then we have to use bracketing method. Uh, the method of bracketing may be used subjectively to arrive at the proper refraction correction. Uh, we can't able to uh, do uh, retinoscopy. We can uh, able to do retinoscopy. Uh, we can't able to find out uh, other. Then we uh, we will use bracketing method uh, and slowly decrease the uh, power. Then other tests, cover tests and pen torches and corneal reflections. Preferred fixing eye for prescribing monocular units. Then radical retinoscopy. Shorter working distance when necessary of axis, visual field access assessment, Amsel, Amsler grill test and for central vision loss, uh, central field vision loss and confrontation test for peripheral field vision loss. Then we have used contrast sensitivity test. Uh, contrast sensitivity test using uh, chart is uh, Pelly Robson contrast sensitivity chart. Then next one is color vision test. Color vision test we have to use uh, FM hundred uh, chart uh, or uh, D fifteen chart. Not using Ishihara. <laughs> These are the uh, charters: uh, Logma charter, uh, contrast sensitivity chart, and color vision and Amsler grid uh, test. This chart. Then visual dysfunctions. These are the, the uh, visual disorder, deviation from normal visual uh, visual structure by disease. Then visual impairment, reduction of visual function because of visual disorder. Next, visual disability, reduced ability to perform a certain task. Next one is visual handicap, uh, non-performers uh, performance of of the task related to individual and social expectation because of visual disability. 
then type of lobition aids uh, optic uh, type of optical lobition aids these are the telescopes bioptics and spectacle magnifier and hand magnifier stand magnifier and dome and bar magnifier front cell prism and mirrors and lenses ctv cctv etc these are the uh, spec uh, magnifier yes. spectacles hand magnifier spectacles then non optical devices uh, relative size and larger assistive devices then glare contest and lightning control devices then third one is poster and comfort uh, maintenance devices and handwriting and written communication devices then next one is medical management devices and uh, last one uh, orientation and mobility management technique and devices and last one is sensory substitution substitution and devices these are the features then uh, uh, we have to go case one history uh, history of patient illness a 14 years uh, female came to our hospital with a complaint of blurring of vision for distance since four months since four months both eye itching frequent since three months past ocular history both eye current glasses since two days medical history none um, allergic uh, history also nothing significant and initial workup uh, non contact uh, tonometer uh, right eye is 15 mm hg and left eye is 13 mm hg in examinations the vision with glasses right eye is 6 by 36 and um, uh, near vision is n36 no improvement of pinhole and left eye is 6 by 24 and um, uh, near vision is N10 and non improvement of pinhole. Then present glass power, uh, right eye is minus 0 0.0 ds and left eye is minus 1.00 ds into 90 degree. And objective refraction is uh, dry retinoscopy. Objective refraction is uh, right eye is minus 0 0.75 ds uh, but right left uh, line then uh, left eye is uh, minus 0 0.75 uh, into 90 degree. Dry eye acceptance is uh, right eye is minus 0 0.75 uh, ds plano and 6 by 36 and in 36. And left eye is um, minus 1.00 dc into 90 degree. And visual acuity is 6 by 24 and uh, near vision is in 10. Then after that, ocular findings. The cornea is clear. Um, cornea is right OU clear. And dear segment, rest in the normal limits, uh, both both eyes in retina. Dull um, foveal reflex and retinal pigment epithelium atrophy and at macular foveal uh, hypoplasia. Both are same. Then additional uh, additional advice for um, multi uh, focal look MF uh, ERG uh, and uh, ERG for further evaluation or neuronal and visual pathway status. And advice no significant impro improvement with glasses after discussion with patient advised for low vision trial. Then after that, before low vision trial, understanding of the patient need life lifestyle. She is, uh, she is 14 years school going student. Her hobbies are reading books and playing indoor games. By understanding her hobbies and needs, we choose appropriate low vision device for distance and near. Then trial is uh, for distance we have to, uh, we will give um, CTV uh, and for near uh, give bar magnifier 2x. Description bar magnifier 2x dictionary uh, uh, directory directory reader for dear only vision six. Uh, then for this uh, then for distance with the help of CTV patient achieved vision binocularly six by twelve parts. Uh, Anjali, uh, yeah, I think we will stop for a moment and discuss this case scenario. Is that okay? Okay, okay, because um. 
uh, for the audience, it would be interactive and uh, what what I feel is like we can discuss this case scenario and then move on to the next case scenario. Yes, we yes. will do that. Yeah, thank you. So, a uh, wonderful presentation, Anjana. I think uh, you have extensively covered about the assessment and stuff. Uh, but when it comes to applying it in your clinics, uh, let the presentation be on uh, Anjana. Because I am going to... Uh, yeah, I want the presentation to be on. You have to share the presentation, Anjana. Open the case and keep it open. Please. So in the meantime, uh, I'll just give the general comments about the presentations you just did. Okay. So uh, when it comes to these extensive hist history taking, I mean, if you can document it as an assessment sheet, it would nearly take three, two to three pages. Uh, I mean, whatever we discussed now. And um, similar to our audience, I don't think the patient would be... Um, uh, really uh, willing to give out so many history in a, a short span of time. So um, what I feel is like you have this extensive list and whenever it is applic applicable to the condition, ocular condition, and whichever is specific for the age and whichever history is specific for the task and interest of the patient, ask the relevant questions and prioritize the patient's important uh, uh, task which the, uh, the person wants to do okay and talk about it and uh, understand the difficulty of the person instead of asking all these uh, questions as an order like what is your chief complaint what is the family history what is the allergic history? i mean these are the routine questions we ask but when it comes to task-based history when you interact with uh, the person uh, i mean uh, i would call it as a interview which you will have with a person Okay, rather than a history taking. Okay. Uh, I hope you can uh, get my point. So um, the next point which he had about um, uh, the, ref I mean, the refraction. When you are doing, uh, I mean, evaluating the refractive error, uh, don't, I mean, when it comes to low vision in my practice, I have seen that auto refraction uh, hardly gives a value. So we uh, always use our retinoscopy. Our retinoscopy uh, gives the best results. But yes, you can try auto refraction. Uh, but regular retinoscopy will, will give you uh, good information. And then, if the regular retinoscopy is not possible, go in for the, uh, the special. Uh, I mean, the modification which you can do with the regular retinoscopy, like rad radical and off axis and all. Okay. So this is one point which we I wanted to highlight here. The next point is about um, the, the contrast sensitivity chart, which you mentioned is only one chart, okay? And that there are different charts and different, um, I mean, screening charts available. And the later option chart is one, one chart. So you can explore and have a list of charts. And um, I mean, if you can see these, uh, the, this Peleropsin chart itself is a, a chart of alphabets. Okay, when it comes to a person who is not uh, not able to identify an alphabet or in very young children, you can use some uh, numbers charts, which are like reassemble screening tools and like contrast sensitivity tools are there. You can do that. And there are also um, recent advancements in the, uh, the field of contrast sensitivity where you can even use uh, apps uh, for these uh, testing these uh, contrast sensitivity in children. So find out about it, okay? And uh, about the color version, yes, you have mentioned FM 100. Uh, it can be time consuming. Again, for, for a person with low vision, uh, I don't think uh, you will be able to patiently do a test like FM 100, which is a uh, relatively um, takes more time, okay? Um, I think these are the general comments I had. Let's move on to quickly move on to the case scenario because this is important because we all study. I mean, I mean, when I was in my college, I used to study all of these uh, um, workups related to low vision. But when it comes to a, a person uh, in front of you, you have to look at the patient's diagnosis and the current uh, visual status and their interests and, and bring together a, a possible management. Okay, so let's talk about the case scenario here. Um, and you can move on to the next slide, Anjana.
Yeah. The next slide, please. The diagnosis. Yeah. So um, you have to um, uh, actually feel that whatever diagnosis we get, we just kind of uh, understand it from whatever diagnosis that I, I mean, here it is foveal hypoplasia. We understand this is foveal hypoplasia. There should be a central vision loss and sort of. But out of uh, the diagnosis, we have to also understand the prognosis understand the uh, condition better. So the ocular diseases is very important. The knowledge about ocular diseases will give you uh, immense help in hand handling or managing a low vision person. So when it comes to low foveal hypoplasia, here uh, I think the additional advice given is multifocal ERG uh, and ERG. But rather than now, uh, retinal uh, doctors would give us um, OCTs, which will give you the, um, I mean, uh, you can, I you also identify uh, typical, atypical for hypoplasia and understand the disease better, okay? Why understanding the disease better is often a condition like a genetic condition, the person, uh, or I, I mean, here uh, it is a, a child. So the parents would be asking whether the vision will be stable or vision will deteriorate. So this question can be answered only when you, I mean, get to understand the diagnosis or else in, go and interact with the ophthalmologist who have referred the location person, understand and give the correct impression. That is the first and mo most important thing which I do. Because uh, when you say that, you cannot say that the vision is stable for a progressive condition. You should, you should be very cautious. You should be specifically indicating the condition, explaining the condition to the person. Okay, that is one thing. And get all the reports. For example, if there are other conditions like macular degeneration or glaucoma, there would be reports. Understand the field of vision from those reports. Minimize your questions or um, focus your questions on the reports which you already have from the person and then ask the specific questions and then move on to the management. Okay, so the next slide please. So the next slide, I mean, this slide gives a lot of information. It, it says that it is, uh, she is, I mean, she is a school, school going child. So you have to manage her education and her hobbies. If you can see, uh, she says reading books. Again, uh, uh, it involves um, her near vision. So you have to be thinking about how effectively you can manage her, her near vision. Okay, so there are two things here. This is school education and her hobbies are also uh, related to near work. The third point is she prefers indoor games. Okay, also you understand, now, again, you have to go back to the ocular condition. Why she prefers an indoor games is foveal hypoplasia can, uh, can be presented as a typical uh, condition or standalone condition or can be associated with other conditions and can also be associated with light sensitivity. These light sensitivities can be of varying degrees. So you have to ask, I mean, when she, when she says that this is her passion, you can ask how is her vision and outdoor environment. So ask related questions uh, whenever the person is, uh, I mean, the, I mean ask, ask either to the uh, ch child or to the parent or the caregiver, okay? So this is important. And next is, um, which is priority, whether the, I mean, the education is prioritized, uh, I mean, should be prioritized or the distance vision. We, we know that for a low, low vision person, there would be impairment in both distance and near vision. So prioritize your management first, because when you, I mean, when the person is prioritizing the task for reading as an important thing, and you go on uh, and do a trial for distance and introduce a CTV or introduce something like manage with glasses, the patient might feel, I mean, this is the usual thing which I have been doing with the regular optometry workup. What else I am going to get from this? So you have to actually think in the shoes of the person who is in front of you and manage and do the, uh, I mean, 
try to manage and uh, uh, they prioritize tasks. Okay, first, that is important. So the next slide, please. I, I'll, I'll just keep it crisp because we have very little time. Yeah. Uh, so the patient has been uh, managed with bar magnifier, which is 2x. Just understand here, the patient has a macular condition. Contrast sensitivity can be involved. Okay. And hence, use devices which has contrast enhancement, inbuilt contrast enhancement. For example, illuminated versions or electronic devices. Electronic devices gives a lot of contrast enhancements. Don't think about only the magnification range which the patient wants. Okay, though the patient magnification, magnification range can be smaller, you can try out small, simple optical devices. But when it comes to the condition and the contrast, think about enhancing the vision as much as possible with uh, assistive devices. Okay. And second thing is always uh, uh, try to give the best possible spectacle correction also. I mean, when you give just a CCTV, they would feel that uh, I mean, the, uh, I mean, try to understand that if a fourteen-year-old wears a CTV, can I mean, can be used only for tasks like stable, stable tasks like seeing or watching a TV. Or I don't think even for a classroom, uh, it would be uh, like um, cosmetically appealing for a person. I mean, just for the acceptance of the device, I, I'm I'm not sure whether it it will be accepted. So go in for regular spectacles which are acceptable. And use filters as and when possible. <coughs> Sorry, go ahead. Continue, please. Next place is hello. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, Anjana, you're audible. Please continue. Okay. Second case is uh, the history, uh, history of present illness. A 15 years old house uh, housewife is pres uh, presented with a decreased uh, distance and near visual acuity since 15 years. Um, she reported that she was having problem in reading and holy books but can do, uh, do her work independently. She used glasses for distance. She does not have any addition disability. She visited a low vision clinic to enhance her distance and near vision. Diagnosis is retinitis pigmentosa. The examinations, the distance is... Uh, uh, use logma chart. Uh, the right eye is 1.3 and left eye is uh, 1 and uh, uh, both eye is 0 0.9 and near visual acuity is uh, both eyes 5 meter at 20 centimeter. The present glass power is uh, power um, right eye is plus 0 0.75 minus 1.00 uh, 1 point uh, cylinder into 90 degree. Um, then uh, left eye is plus 0 0.50 uh, bar minus 1.00 into 10 degree. Yes, 0 0.9 log march uh, acuity uh, log in log march. Then um, the patient is confrontation test done. The visual field was reduced peripherally. And color vision in uh, protonopia and contrast sensitivity was good. The patient trial, uh, trial is um, the telescope, mono, uh, monocular telescope, 4x and 0 0.3 visual acuity. Uh, then handheld magnifier of 6x uh, and use it to 25 centimeter in one minute. And management. And the uh, first is distance glasses and uh, convex lenses for near work and counseling, genetic home management and follow up after three, four months. Thank you. Okay, Anjana. So, thank you. So let's discuss the case scenario too. I want you to go to the first step. Yeah. So here, uh, it is a common condition which you have taken uh, uh, as retinitis pigmentosa, one of the common conditions around the world and very difficult to manage, I would say, because retinitis pigmentosa person would uh, have a normal, near normal vision, central vision, 
I mean, for even for 50 to 60 years, but at one point, their disease would progress and their vision would completely change to uh, county fingers or hand movements. So it, it will be very difficult to manage if you don't talk about rehabilitation early. Again, you have to think about the disease prognosis here, diagnosis first, and then, uh, I mean, I know it is very difficult to tell a person with normal, near normal vision or moderately visual impairment that your vision might not be stable, can, can reduce further. It is a progressive condition, but you are, I mean, you you would be the person who would open it to them, open it to them. So be cautious and slowly and steadily you have to explain it to the person. But be, I mean, you have to actually. You have mentioned about the contrast, uh, I mean, sorry, the field of vision as the reduced periphery. You could have asked the person as, since 15 years, how is your field of vision reducing? Is it gradually reducing or is it stable? You'd be finding conditions with retinal retinitis pigmentosa of stable field of vision for even 60 years of age. But there would be conditions which uh, diagnose at, at seven years of age and would progress completely in an year and they would have lost, I mean, complete loss of vision in, in a period of one year. And they would see that, uh, I mean, the first case scenario, which I told you, has retinitis pigmentosa a patient of 40 year, uh, 40 year old, enjoyed a complete uh, near normal vision, but reduced at the age of 45 years. So these are different um, genetic expressions of the diagnosis you have to think about. So whenever in doubt, whenever the patient is in doubt, whether the, my vision will be clear or not, you have to seek genetic counseling as early as possible because the patient would want to know how would be the vision. So genetic counselors give a, a good picture of how the disease progress can, okay, based upon the genetic condition. And also your the practicing ophthalmologist will give you the information. Again, Look at the fundus picture, look at the presentation, look at the OCT. OCT will give us the thickness of the layers and give us the um, the condition of the disease. I mean, how, how severe it is. Okay, so look at all the reports. Again, reiterating the fact that you have to look at the reports, look at the presentation, and then move on to evaluating the person. So, uh, uh, I don't think she is having a difficulty in mobility. So I'm just assuming that the person is kind of, the field of vision is not too much reduced, but confrontation would give us a, a, an information. But if, if you want to can quantify, go, go in for tangent screen or use the regular um, optim, uh, Humphrey visual field analyzer and understand the field of vision and have a baseline and do it at regular periods and look at the field of vision change, okay? Um, reading, yes, for reading uh, uh, holy books, it's a continuous reading uh, 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 task. So use devices which is specific for continuous reading, not devices which can be used for spot reading. Okay, now go to the next slide. Yeah, just I told you, and color vision, I don't think there would be a typical protonopia, but there can be presentations of uh, all these uh, patterns, but color vision will be ready, can be reduced. Contrast sensitivity can be good, or if the person has additional disabilities. Now the person is 50 year old, so they she can get cataract. Cataract along with retinitis pigmentosa can cause contrast sensitivity loss. So understand. Uh, the other causes of loss of contrast sensitivity when you're managing a person, okay? Oh, okay, and um, uh, LOGMA, I know it is the um, standard norms of uh, writing the visual attitude. And when it comes to research prospects, you have to actually use the LOGMA version. But when this same file goes back to the referred ophthalmologist, if the... Re uh, the institution prefers a Snellen equivalent. You have to also record the Snellen equivalent along with logma. This is very important because there is a referral pathway we have to create for a low vision care. If you don't use the same notation as that of the other um, departments, 
you they would wouldn't know how the um, low vision uh, care and rehabilitation is kind of uh, improving for example if you would have uh, improved the vision with a, an assistive device if it is just an analog mat they wouldn't go back and convert it and how it is there I mean, rather than a regular optometry how low vision care has helped the patient the referring uh, professional will not know so you, there should be a, there should be a feedback mechanism to tell them that this is so and so person has been managed and this has been attained right or enhanced uh, vision is is this so use um, the um, uh, the Snellen equivalent, which is common for the institution, and also use the cloud map. The next slide, please. Yes, uh, I I even though the field of vision would be normal, I mean, uh, can be manageable for a person with retinitis pigmentosa. Be very careful when you prescribe a um, monocular tel any telescope, because telescope is in itself because of its optics can cause, um, I mean, reduce field of view. So if you're introducing a monocular telescope for vision enhancement, be very cautious. It can even more reduce the field of view. Okay? Just because it improves the uh, in the, the line which is read on the our, our chart, don't prescribe it. Okay? And handheld magnifier, again, handheld magnifier is not for continuous reading. It is only for Task like uh, you want to read a, a tag. I mean, uh, uh, there is um, a medicine bottle you have to read. You can use a hand magnifier. But the person wants to read a holy book, which might take 20 to 30 minutes, right? So you have to be very um, cautious and prescribe uh, assistive devices, which are specific for continuous reading. Okay? Um, Yes, counseling you have uh, in, included. Home management, yes. <coughs> when you're uh, explaining about the home management, ask also about how is her, um, is there a difficulty in her dark environment uh, outside her home? Okay, so you can then give all these uh, uh, counseling on how to manage or enhance her uh, vision when she's out outside her home and in a dim environment. In the uh, indoor, uh, I mean, in her home, she would feel, I mean, she, uh, because she's 50 year old and her diagnosis is 15 years back. So I feel she would know how to manage, but give assistance and just check whether she's comfortable in other environments also. Okay. Um, thanks so much. Uh, I think uh, I have picked up the uh, important things. Uh, maybe if there are any Q and Q and A, we can take it up. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a very detailed explanation for particular cases. I just want you to summarize what would be the important workup from the optometry side for a low vision patient, and how do we particularly choose a magnification if there is any problem with distance or near? Is there any formula for calculations, or how do we arrive at a particular target for this particular patients? I mean, the, there are different formulas available. I don't stick to a single formula. I mean, the formula will give you only a tentative magnification. It is not going to be the uh, the prescribed magnification. So it is just a starting point. Use any formula which involves working distance uh, in it. Okay. So um, any any formula which is applicable with working distance in, in place can be used and use it as a tentative magnification. And apply it to the specific, I mean, optical magnification, yes. When it comes to beyond um, a severely uh, impaired, a moderately visually impaired, having a near vision of N36, N36 or uh, less than N36, only when uh, this is the scenario, if you introduce an electronic aid to them, um, it would mean like... Um, I mean, contrast enhancement is possible in electronic magnifiers. Low magnifications are available in electronic magnifiers. Think about electronic magnifiers even for moderate visual impairment. I mean, that is my thing. So don't stick on to the formulas, but the application is important. Try out, I mean, get this tentative magnification 
try out these devices um uh, specific for the task I mean, when when it comes to stand magnifier and too much of magnification i don't think um you can uh, use it effectively so for example you can give large print books and reduce the magnification of the device which you are giving so it's a combined approach you have to do okay ma'am and there is one more question in the youtube stating that uh, we have to check binocular vision status before we get into lva prescriptions yeah binocular vision can be done even in the regular clinic i i feel binocular vision clinic uh, binocular vision is is the is, is should be record documented in every uh, regular optometry workup so binocular vision yeah, in in low vision it is always a binocular vision which we kind of think about improving and which is the preferred eye we have to think about so i think anjana also uh, uh, noted that in her presentation about i and identifying the preferred eye but regular optometry practice uh, the the basic primary low vision care can be managed even in the regular uh, regular optometry if you give the best possible correction and give higher ads even in the regular optometry work most of the low vision patient don't come for a low vision separate clinic but uh, referring them for other services is important and like in case of retinitis pigmentosa we, we we cannot expect an optometrist or not even the ophthalmologist to spend time and talk about the condition and other related uh, topics because of the time involved okay refer even though the person's vision is good refer if there is a difficulty refer if there are questions that's how you can um, manage completely thank you so much ma'am it was a detailed explanation and i also thank mr gopinath he shared his own perspective on diagnosing the particular case what prescriptions will be ideal for the cases what we discussed he also added his points in our youtube and anshi ma'am do you have any questions ma'am i would just like to thank devi for uh, giving such a wonderful and uh, you know a very small and but what do you say what do you, i i don't mean small but uh, a very detailed uh, and a calm explanation on all the cases that we had discussed today though there were only two cases but i think the very important point that she has brought about is ask if you don't ask questions or if you don't get a good history then it would be really difficult to uh, manage any case whether it is a low vision case or any uh, good work up so thank you devi for bringing about that point that the more we ask the more details we get and uh, the last point that she made that you don't really need a low vision clinic as such you can even do a low vision work up in your own optometry uh, setup you just need to understand what is the patient's need and you can just start with a higher ad and just talking to the patient that itself is a very big thing so uh, thank you so much devi for all your inputs thank you and um, uh, primary low vision yes but for secondary and tertiary i think each of the institution should think about having a full fledged low vision low care vision rehabilitation care. so there are a, a group of persons who come under severely visually impaired and rehabilitation and can be managed only if there is a facility further on not just the devices but the rehabilitative care right so enabling the person is just not enough educating them and empowering them is the key because visual impairment is one criteria or disability uh which has uh its uh, kind of challenges than other uh, uh disabilities uh, as such because even though the person gets all of this ed education getting a job getting in uh, independent life is difficult it is there with all disabilities but specifically we have seen so many of them uh who is needing an extra effort to get into a mainstream so we we should be the road map to it very very true yes gomati over to you i think thank we you. finished on yeah. time yes thank you devi ma'am that was a detailed explanation so we are very glad to have you here today thank you so much ma'am thank so much anshi ma'am thank you for bringing in the expert <laughs> You are expert in bringing in the experts, ma'am. Thank you so much, Shanti, ma'am. Welcome, welcome.
Anshima, you have any announcements for this week? Uh, Always yes, come with announcements. Yes, so this time we are opening up the uh, forum for letting everyone know that we are starting up with uh, fellowships at Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry and the admissions are open for the month of Jan. We have started up with our clinical optometry fellowship, which is for six months. And for all the fellowship courses, we also have a stipend. We also have a yearly clinical uh, fellowship. Uh, then there are two other fellowships which are starting up by this year. The first one is pediatric fellowship, where the students will get exposure to binocular vision as well as orthoptics. And the next one is advanced research. So student, there are a lot of students who are coming up with the interest in research. So we are going to give them four months intensive training in research and eight months of clinical uh, fellowship as well as doing a research project during that time. So we have these available fellowships and definitely if anyone who's interested can contact um, Ms. Atapri, our admin officer, to definitely quickly take up the seats because we have very limited seats for these uh, fellowship courses that we have started. So thank you so much, Anshima. Dear audiences, thank you so much for your continuous support towards the Optometry series. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. As Anshika ma'am said, if you are interested to enroll in the fellowship course, I'll be providing you the number in the description box. Meet you all in the next episode. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you.